Hello everyone, I'm here today to test the Clevo W550EU. I just happened to notice there are basically no reviews of this model online, and that they'd probably be quite helpful. Um, I just happened to have one of the, I guess, first few made, um, because again, total lack of reviews. Um, this is the first Clevo that I know of, at least, to be fitted with an IPS display. Um, that's what makes it interesting. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, the most of the coating is this. Uh, it's plastic, but it's this brushed metal finish that looks quite nice actually. Um, it's quite dark. It's sort of titanium, sort of dark rather than aluminium. Um, uh, let's see. One, th two things I have noticed about it so far. One is that it does not hold up to wear and tear that easily. I've already scuffed it. Um, how do you scuff brushed aluminium, you ask? Well, apparently with a big book or something. Um, also, the lid is apparently designed for a slightly larger LCD panel. If I push down on it, it uh, bows in, which I'm pretty sure you can see from the light reflections. Um, it bows in quite far, but doesn't actually touch the panel. Uh, also, it only does that with a severe amount of pressure. The sort of pressure you'd get if you were, I don't know, really knocking it in your bag. Um, this makes me think it might actually be quite resilient, because it's not, because if you do hit the lid, it's not going to go and hit anything inside. It's just going to flex and then jump back. Anyway, uh, let's have a look around the machine. Um, first of all, it's very thin, as I will show you in a moment. Let's go for the left side first, just because I can hold that. Um, left side, we have two USB ports, uh, USB 3. We have HDMI, we have a big vent, relatively speaking. Also, you'll notice here that the keyboard is dipped in. Um, that's so that the keyboard keys do not touch the screen, which has been annoying me on a load of Macs. I've seen like greasy fingerprint marks on the uh, key marks all over the screen. We have VGA for legacy purposes, Ethernet, that's Gigabit, I think, uh, power connector, and you can see the rear of the laptop really is the thickest part, comparatively. I wish I had a measuring tape on hand, um, but none of it's particularly thick. Let's move to the back side now. We have a couple of hinges, a battery, quite a lot of battery to be honest. Um, this is the 62 watt hour version, which appears to be standard. Um, and no actual connectors on the back side. Let's spin it around again. On this side, we have the Kensington lock, um, an optical drive. I'm trying to remove that. Um, and two USB 2.0 ports, one headphone port, and one microphone port, uh, standard 3.5mm. On the front side, we have well, very little to be honest. I see pretty much nothing apart from, oh, that light is letting me know that this machine is sleeping. Also, we have a, uh, it's a memory card reader. That's a PCIe one, so it has a lot of bandwidth. Good for your fast SD cards and so on. It takes SD cards, uh, MMC and MS. I haven't actually tested that with anything other than SD, but it worked very well for that. Um, let's go to the bottom side. Oops. Here we have main access bay for CPU, RAM, all that lot, cleaning the fan and so on. It takes four screws. It's not all that bad. Um, very few vents, as you can see, but then this machine doesn't get that hot. Um, one 2.5 inch bay um, for nine and a half mil drives, mind, not 12 and a half. Um, and then this is pretty much optical drive. I've been meaning to remove it, I can only guess that unscrewing this screw will get rid of it. Um, basically because I don't really need it. I could probably do with another hard drive there or something. Um, anyway, that's done, so let's flip it over and have a look. Let's boot it up. Of course this is on sleep, so I will have a problem showing you anything like boot up times. Um, I'll shut it down quickly, but uh, the specs of this machine are... Whoa, you do not need to see my password. Oh, that's better. Um, okay, specs of this machine that I have here. I have 
8 gig of RAM in it on a single stick at the moment. I have a I have a 240 gig Intel SSD, the 335. Um, I have a, an i7-3632QM, that's a 35 watt quad core running at 2.2 GHz with hyperthreading. Um, and the display itself is a fixed 15.6 inch 1080p IPS display. Uh, more on that later because it is quite impressive. Um, keyboard, as you can see, is pretty much UK QWERTY layout. Um, and touchpad is... Uh, the, the buttons aren't quite integrated into the surface of the pad, but it's still quite nice. Um, one thing I have found is that the vertical distance is, does feel a little bit limited if you're doing two-finger scrolling and so on. Um, but with the sensitivity up, it doesn't really matter. That touchpad is very sensitive, by the way, and quite smooth to the touch, because it, um, it just has this slightly, I guess, glossy plastic... Um, coating, which makes it smooth. Uh, you'll see also the brushed metal effects carries on to the surrounds of the keyboard. Um, keyboard has a numpad. That's an oddity in a 15.6 inch. I don't recognise that. Also, we have a power button. Top right. Let's see. Other things on this machine. We have um, for extra function buttons, we have play pause, trackpad on off, LCD on off, mute, sleep, uh, volume down, volume up, no idea. Um, brightness down, brightness up. Uh, key, we have uh, webcam on off, Wi Fi on off, Bluetooth on off. Um, that's something I haven't covered. The webcam is pretty average to be honest. Um, that is activation LED, that's webcam itself, and then microphone hole. Um, this thing's a 2 megapixel camera, good for 1080p video, and uh, yeah, to be honest, it's actually quite nice. Um, the only problems I've noticed with it are with Skype, and they're not problems so much, it's just uh, Skype is a bit low quality these days. Um, oh, right. Um, the BIOS has pretty much nothing in it apart from time settings, and I think um, settings for uh, UEFI booting, which should speed up the boot process a lot. In, uh, but I don't have that turned on at the moment because I just have my own copy of Windows 7, uh, which I will boot in 3, 2, 1, no. I'm not actually counting how long this is taking. Um, you can find out in the YouTube video itself. I turned off the GUI boot, by the way, just to uh, speed up the process a bit, which works quite well. And pretty much nothing's starting on boot. And we are connected to the internet. as well. All right. Uh, first things first, that 1080p resolution is very nice on this size of screen. I am absolutely loving it for doing all sorts of work. I am a, well, I'm a computer science student, so uh, I program a lot. And... Well, I have the quad core because I use VMs a lot. Um, battery life on this machine, by the way, is I think officially rated at seven hours, but um, from what I've seen, you might get that. I've never really run it down. But I know with uh, three hours of working in a VM during lectures, I got the battery down to about 60%, which is okay. I got it down to the same level by playing Half-Life 2 for maybe an hour and a half, two hours um, in another lecture. Um, so yeah, that's not bad at all. Uh, this is, I think, I should show you some brightness notches. We have lowest brightness, which is, eh, it's okay compared to the background. Um, I usually leave it on just two notches up, because that's quite nice. Um, I don't really know what else to show you, except qualities of the IPS display itself. Um, like if I, I have an external monitor here, I have a big 27 inch IPS display, um, very big in comparison. Um, I will temporarily hook up to that just so we can see the quality difference. Um, let's see, where did I put that HDMI cable? Uh -huh. HDMI does tend to just work. I also, for the record, have tried outputting 2560 by 1440 as the big monitor supports it, um, but this laptop doesn't seem to want to do it, so I don't know what's up with that. Um, anyway, Windows key P to duplicate, switch input to HDMI, and 
watch as the machine Audacity is running on is uh, complaining, but hey, yeah, that's mirrored pretty much. Um, now, let's just see if any of these stock wallpapers show up anything. I should say before we start that this is a known Adobe RGB 72% gimlet display. This, I have no idea, but it seems pretty much equal. Um, this is a glare coating, this is the matte coating, which incidentally I'll just show you now. Um, if I raise up the machine, whoops, so I can get reflections off the room light, um, that's a 200 watt lamp, and to be honest, it's coping pretty well. I mean, that's not ideal, but I have used this thing in direct sunlight, and uh, as long as you turn the brightness up a little, it's absolutely fine. Certainly fine in lectures, in a very bright lecture theatre. Um, Alright, yes, background. Um, I pray that whatever turns up is actually safe for work. Let's find out. Oh, I have no idea. So I'm just going to move on. Lady with greens. Um, we can't quite see the same greens on both sides, but to my eyes the laptop LCD is a lot punchier. Very nice colours, do like. Um, that's not safe for work. Okay, I'm going to have to edit that out somehow. Um, why can you never find a decent picture when you want it? Aha, uh -huh, fox, that'll do. Okay, now I don't know if you can tell, but, um, but again, to my eyes, the fox has a lot more orange on the right monitor. I should point out, the left one is at uh, my calibrated settings, so the Lagom suite, and the right is at just, I don't know, default essentially. Um, Still, that red does look a lot punchier on the smaller display. It might just be that everything looks a bit more colourful on that. Or it might just be higher reds. Find out, I'll have to show more wallpapers, um, which might be not safe for work, so... Best of luck, me. Hey, that'll do nicely. That's nice. Thank you. Uh, that'll do too, to be honest. Um, Again, colours, particularly if you look at the left of this image on both monitors, um, it looks a bit punchier on the smaller monitor. Don't know why exactly. Uh, next image, please. Actually, this is simple but a good demonstration. And that is, again, quite solid. This one looks a bit almost washed out in comparison. Um, I don't know whether this indicates that the smaller monitor might have a slightly higher gamut, or whether it means the smaller monitor just has a better contrast ratio. I honestly do not know. Um, it could be that I bought a rubbish 27-inch monitor, but it's one of those 2560 by 1440 models from Korea, so I somewhat doubt that it's actually rubbish. Um, right. That's, ooh, hey, another good wallpaper. Uh, let's move that sticky note. That is, I'm just comparing them by eye. Again, one on the right looks a bit punchier to me. Um, yes, to the point where I would probably I probably only prefer to watch videos on the left because of the bigger size. Um, but anyway, that's about it for images, I hope at least. Um, remind me to edit out that not safe for work one, or at least put something over it. Um, Alright, keyboard travel is one last thing I have to show you, and that is because it's, uh, it's not massive, it's quite shallow to be honest, but the keys activate solidly every time, so... Um, so it is fine to type on, you've just got to get used to it, and particularly used to the shy travel, because it's quite hard to find the right key sometimes. On the other hand, there's no uh, no real keyboard flex. No, that's just the laptop underneath this thing uh, flexing. Sorry, the second laptop underneath here. Um, anyway. So, yes, that's my review, and I am really liking this device. It's... Uh, 
it's absolutely great for going on the move. Ooh, one last thing is uh, wait. If I will, if I just disconnect this. Yeah, hey. Um, one last thing is wait. It is still quite easy to pick this up in whoa, one hand, um, as long as you get the balancing right. Um, I prefer not to, but it does feel solid enough for you to be able to do that, and it's certainly a lot lighter than my old uh, ThinkPad T60, which was 2.8 kilograms. I don't have actual measurements for this, I'm afraid. might provide them later. Um, one other last thing is that I do recommend you go for two-channel memory because I'm actually noticing slight bottlenecking just on the single-channel memory, um, especially when playing games, but I guess that's not really what I bought this machine for. Um, anyway, that's it. I'll see you later.